1974, there was a tornado outbreak so big, it's been called the super outbreak, something that experts and meteorologists think was never possible to happen again. But now we have the experts themselves, the people that were in the field to say that we may have, on April 27th, 2011, another super outbreak. I have a map here of the tornadoes in that April 3rd, 4th, 1974 super outbreak, as we call it. Each one of these red marks is one of the tornado paths. So there was 147 of those in the United States, all the way from Michigan down to Mississippi, and many of the same places in Alabama that got hit again in the April 27th, 2011 outbreak. I mean, this was the benchmark for us. I mean, when we were in school, this is what we were taught on, and most of us thought we probably wouldn't see anything like that ever again. I was very hesitant to ever call anything another super outbreak, particularly this one. 30 F4 or higher tornadoes in 1974, but as the data kept coming in, I thought, hmm, maybe this is in the same echelon. I was anxious for Dr. Forbes to crunch the numbers, and once he did, I became convinced that... Okay, so how do you make this, or how do you say, okay, wow, we do have another super outbreak? Yeah, well, I've gone through and crunched the numbers, as Stu says, and we see in 2011 there was actually more tornadoes, affected somewhat more states, the fatality tolls are very similar, but the number of killer tornadoes in 1974 was greater, more injuries, total path lengths fairly similar when you add them all together, but as Stu mentioned, the number of EF2 and stronger, the EF4 and stronger weren't as many. So 74 wins some of the parameters, 2011 wins others, so there's two that are up there almost identical. That's why we've decided to call 2011 another super outbreak. Yeah, I had never seen the parameters off the charts, the instability. I mean, it was a day where you went out and you knew that there were going to be tornadoes. When you go out in the field, you're thinking about covering the story, but you're also thinking about your own safety. Yes. Because you're going into it. To come in and see uh, just mile after mile, especially of a, of a city. You know, here's the University of Alabama, here's the hospital right there, and here's this huge path cut right through. I've never seen it. The only way that I could get word back to the Weather Channel is with my iPhone. To put this in perspective, I think, where I was the next morning seeing all the damage, a gas station gone, several businesses destroyed, cars where they shouldn't be, upside down positions they shouldn't be, that alone was a huge story. But the fact that that was dwarfed by all of these other lines, all of these other towns that were destroyed, I think really shows you that a super outbreak, th the magnitude of a super outbreak and what it is. It was really a worst case scenario for Alabama. You didn't think that it was going to measure up to a super outbreak. You were a little skeptical. Because I didn't think anything could measure up in my lifetime to 1974. I flew a helicopter along part of that track and every tree in the forest was knocked down. And usually the trees are falling in the same direction toward which the tornado was moving in southwest toward the northeast these all got knocked down in the inflow to the tornado before the main part of the tornado ever got there we've only used it twice one the 1974 super outbreak and two the 1993 march superstorm but this one by any reasonable standard seems to measure up